Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, it's very good to be here and to see uh, some people uh, uh, being, being so nice to come on such a stormy day and uh, sharing the joy on that Halfton is, uh, has at this day of launching this tense issue. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Afton Association, uh, we would like to thank you for, for coming and we would like to thank Fundação Rui Cunha for hosting us with such uh, wonderful conditions, which make us really proud and uh, glad to, to share with uh, Fundação Rui Cunha uh, uh, this uh, launching. Uh, of course, we also uh, would like to uh, uh, give a special thank you to BNU in the person of uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Carlos Alvarez for uh, being such a wonderful uh, partner of uh, Halftone and sponsoring us in such a way that allows us, as you may see, to keep our fine editorial uh, graphic presentation preparing this number and having it printed in a, in a nice way that uh, as a uh, Halftone editorial team um, uh, gave us uh, as another good example of such a good practice. So uh, without further delay, I would give the floor to uh, João Paula as a head of the editorial team and uh, we'll ask him to present and to talk about uh, this um, this tenth issue that we are so proud to launch uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco, and uh, thank you, everybody, to um, be present in this session. Um, we are very happy that we have achieved uh, this milestone of the issue number 10. Uh, we never thought that we would uh, uh, come to this point. Um, in fact, um, we feel that the editorial team and uh, all members of uh, this uh, magazine, we have learned a lot, learned with, uh, with the making, learned with the discussion, and, um, and, the, and the result is up to you and others to uh, Criticize or appreciate. Uh, so far, <coughs> uh, so far, this magazine is uh, kind of unusual in the um, universe of uh, photo photographic um, uh, periodicals. On one hand, uh, this is not a themed magazine. Um, this is very wide open to uh, what the collaborators bring into uh, the table. So we have street photography, we have documentary photography, we have um, artistic photography. Uh, in fact, we, we expect to push the boundaries of photography. There are some experiences from some uh, members, including um, illustration within photography. We are not close to only the photography uh, aspect. Uh, mixed media and others are allowed and welcomed to, to be part of this world. Uh, we don't want to be <coughs> encroached in the world of uh, street, uh, straight photography. Uh, therefore, um, uh, our magazine, uh, on the other hand, has not yet, uh, perhaps one day, uh, had um, a technical, uh, technical and educational articles. So far, we don't have articles. We have um, mainly um, showcased works of um, our members, and that's the main goal. So it's a very visual. Um, it's 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 made for the pleasure of the eye, and um, and it's very straightforward. We don't have ads. In fact, we have ads. We have um, 
We have uh, BN Newhead, which is our main only and main sponsor, uh, and which is on the on the back cover of our magazine. So it's uh, we dedicate this back cover for BNU every time with a different photograph, and this photograph is taken by one of our members, and this is a very important piece that we have, and it's a statement always on our magazine. Um, and then we have, uh, which is not a, considered a, a sponsor, but is, a, I would say, a partner, which is uh, the Portuguese Library. Uh, the Portuguese Library is where we are, where, where we have our ed headquarters, and uh, we thank very much the, the support of uh, um, all kinds of logistics and so on. And then we have another ad, which is the Ocker Space, which is um, a gallery by uh, one of our founding members, João Miguel Barros, which uh, is located in Lisbon, and it's dedicated to photography, uh, research, and uh, I think uh, video art. Um, so these are the ads we have, uh, only three in a magazine. So as you know, we publish uh, six photographers' works uh, per magazine. Um, we have, in this case, uh, published, a, the sixth one is a special photographer that was the Japanese uh, photographer Ozue uh, Eiko, which has passed away a couple of months ago. So we have paid tribute to him on, uh, on, the last, uh, uh, on the last chapter of this magazine. And there is a text written by João Miguel Barros to pay tribute to him. Uh, so what we usually do in our presentations is to um, uh, give the opportunity for the authors to explain a little bit what is their insight of their uh, of their work um, while we uh, present and show at the same time what is published um, so this time uh, <coughs> we have Carmen Serejo which is a photographer uh, from Portugal she's um, in the she was a part of uh, UNICEF and uh, she was very um, uh, connected to photography w and, and, and still is. And she provided us um, insight of a work which, um, which is called Time to Listen. Um, she cannot be present because she lives in Portugal. However, maybe, uh, can you pass the slides of Carmen while I read her statement? Because she sent us a statement, and I could read. That's it. I would like to. St so this is uh, Carmen's uh, reading. It's working. Is it working? Yeah. I would like to start by thanking Afton for the opportunity to include me in the. Uh, number 10 magazine alongside prestigious fellow photographers. Congratulations to all members of the editorial team for their excellent work. I'm very sorry I can't be with you right now, but the recent eye surgery prevents me from doing so. However, I would like to leave my testimony about this series called It's Time to Listen, they say. For me, photography has been a, f a, a tool for personal expression and for building narratives in which each person has their own energy and power. Only after immersing all my senses in the story, I try to conceive and explore the images. I believe in photography as a tool for perception, awareness, and connecting with others. And portrait photography is undoubtedly one of the areas of artistic creation without limits. For me, it's about creating a snapshot that speaks about the individual, the feeling, the environment, or context that surrounds them. 
And when I do that, my first concern is to tell the story of that very moment. On one occasion in my life in photography, I wanted to document some of the pro protests and marches that took place in Portugal. Walking side by side with activists, I felt the intensity and fervor of their struggles, the pain, the anger, but also the hope. And I fell in love with the portraits of expression and protest. They are snapshots that don't lie. It's time to listen, they say. I portrayed some moments of the young Portuguese activists. Young people fundamentally vote less than older people. But that doesn't reveal their lack of interest or political apathy. To say that young people are not very interested or participative is a simplistic view. It's even dangerous. What they are choosing are other forms of participation that go beyond voting. And at a time when being young is synonymous with being digital, their interest in politics takes up other forms of participation and unconventional strategies. Portuguese youth vote too little. They distrust political parties, but they are the first to raise their voices to change the world. They believe in the power of the street. They use the internet and mobile phones to spread the word and call for protests. It's time to listen, they say. It's different from what I've appreciated from other Alftown members. I wanted to take a risk. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. This is... Okay, so the second, um, the second project uh, that we have here um, uh, has been, um, uh, has been, uh, uh, it's it's done by uh, Jane Chu. Is a she is an architect, a professor of architecture in China nearby, which we had the pleasure to to meet last year. And, and we challenged Jane to enter into this uh, uh, magazine, which was a nice uh, journey uh, with uh, lots of dialogue. And, and we are very happy that Jane uh, accepted the challenge. And she is here with us today. She came all the way from <laughs> from Guangzhou, and uh, she's going to present us her project. Welcome, Jane. Hi. Good evening. Um, thank you for asking me to be here and choose my project. Um, I don't talk in English for many years, <laughs> so I, I try to explain my project in simple words and sentences. Yeah. Um, I'm Jane, I'm from Guangdong, Foshan, and I'm now, uh, like you introduced, uh, I'm a professor in university teaching architecture now. And photographer is my second career. <laughs> I, I started to, I fell in love with photographing about 10 years ago. Um, and at first I only take photos for my daughter and families who I'm familiar with. And then I met some other people that are interested in photographing. And then I started to take photos for some people that I'm not that familiar and even a stranger. We are for, it's the first time we met that I showed them. 
um, it is that time that um, when I take photos for strangers, I see they are m m most people they feel uh, nervous and uncomfortable uncomfortable before the lens and they don't know how to pose oh. um, and at that time I don't know how to guide them so I I went to start uh, modern dance yeah yeah I started to learn modern dance and it is that time and when I dance when I see the um, dancers, they are mostly normal people from all uh, very different kinds of career. And no matter they are tall, short, fat or skin, um, they are very charming and dazzling while they are, um, they are in the dance and in the moment while they dance and they enjoy the moment. So I, I start to question what's the standard of beauty. You know, um, when we see photos at the, um, at the media and uh, at the website, uh, especially in the mainland of China, <laughs> they used to like um, being white, skinny, um, I see faces look almost the same. And sometimes um, I see my friend in real person, they are already beautiful and charming to me. But when they post photos of themselves, I barely recognize them. So <laughs> I, I try to um, tell them uh, with my photos and lens, that they are already very beautiful in the way they are. They don't have to mm, uh, satisfy other people's standard. And also, there shouldn't be just one standard of beauty, in my opinion. And um, Um, this is not my um, first project, and not the only one, but it's the, um, the latest, and I works most. So it's easy to <laughs> choose the picture in, 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 in short time, so I choose this project. Um, in the shooting, um, Last week, last week, uh, the, 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 the last lady I shoot, um, when, when we finish the uh, shooting and we are reviewing the pictures we take before, she told me that she haven't looked her, uh, her, her body in, in, in that way. Uh, at first, she felt a little strange when he see her body pictures. But um, when, when we finish the shooting and she reviewing the picture, she told me um, she started to like her body. She had never accepted her body like now. So um, that's time um, when she told me that, I, I want to cry a little bit. <laughs> Because that was uh, what that is what I really want to do with my uh, lens. And when we shooting together, I try to find their own beauty. Um, so there are, I think there are works uh, I finish with. Uh, a subject together, not just myself. Um, you know, when I first uh, shoot uh, girls or ladies um, that I'm not familiar with, some they they look beauty with um, more uh, the the popular standards, 
and they, I, I can take beautiful pictures easily. But I found um, they kind of uh, easy to became some kind of performing. They used to, um, they know in which angle they look beauty. So they will, they will act or like a, a actor. Oh. So it's not easy to see what's real in them when I shooting uh, the beauty, beautiful ladies. Oh, beautiful. Um, so I prefer more to take photos for what we call uh, uh, normal <laughs> people. I, I don't know if it is the exact word. Um, when I took photos for them, um, usually they take times to, uh, they take time, they take more time for them to find a comfort way uh, between this. Yeah. Um, but when I find them, um, I, they, you know, sometimes um, when they are not, they are, they are nervous uh, in, in, in the lens uh, looking at me. I will ask them to look in the mirror of themselves. Um, one girl told me that she had never looked at herself so, uh, so, 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 so. <laughs> no, so, yeah, yeah, so deep. And haven't looked at herself for so long, for quite a long time. Um, and some, some, some ladies, they, they don't say a word, just look at the mirror, uh, look at herself in the mirror, and she cried. <laughs> yeah, she cried. And I, you know, many, many, many people come to my studio, and we first met, but they, they tell their secrets to me. So I, I sort of, um, they, we, we don't have, you know, um, when I am my age, <laughs> many, many girls or many, many, many women or, or men, uh, they don't have many time for uh, being themselves. They have many other uh, roles to play for father, for uh, comrades, uh, for 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 daughter or others. So when they are spending time with me taking photos, they can be with themselves. Um, that is very precious for them. And oh, um, this is what I do. <laughs> That's why I like uh, taking photos. Thank you. <laughs> um, I try my best. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. I think uh, it, you know, it was um, very profound, very meaningful, and emotional. And and the beauty of the pictures is revealed afterwards. We are very very pleased to have you uh, in around us in our association and. To add that you have collaborated and have shared your your feelings and everything. Thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe we need to breathe <laughs> a little bit. Okay, so the next project is by Sarah August, so I believe you guys know Sarah. Sarah is 
uh, part of uh, the editorial team as well. Unfortunately, unfortunately, she had to be uh, on her classes. She's a teacher in the university, and she will uh, not come on time to um, to present her work. Maybe what we can do is, Francisco, you pass you pass the slides, and I I could uh, eventually read his. Yeah. Okay. It's a way to do it. Um, and you can go freely. All right. I just it's, a, it's only a paragraph or two. The development of a project can be as quick as a camera shutter, because every moment can be unexpected. In the blink of an eye, the tranquil stillness of bridges gives way to the sudden flapping of wings. Photography becomes testament to the delicate balance between tranquility and transience, preserving the restless of these fleeting instants. To seize, to seize these fortunate moments, one just needs to be there, attuned to the ever-changing surroundings, and as a swift as the bodies launched into the boundless, boundless expanse. So, just freeze the time, encapsulate the sense of the unpredictable when the world transforms and wings unfold. This is Cyrus. So now, <clears throat> We are going to invite Nuno Calçada Bastos to sit with us and present your project. We are very happy that you finally joined and uh, uh, w put yourself together to pro provide us a... <laughs> Welcome, Nuno. Hello, everybody. This is very intimidating. Uh, I think everybody knows me here, most of the people, I guess, except Jane. So welcome to Macau. Um, so first of all, thank you, Jean-Paula, for pulling me out of the, the closet, as they say. <laughs> uh, so it's been a, quite a bit of time since I show some of my photos. So what I'm showing here today is actually something quite old. Uh, these are images from a, a trip that I did when I was very young and long hair kind of back in the in the 90s some of my older friends they 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 met me like this and it's quite interesting some people don't recognize me probably so few wouldn't recognize me um so this was a very quick trip uh, that I did in the, right after Tiananmen so Tiananmen 89 uh, this was the the end of 90 crossing to 91 <coughs> so there was a little bit of a unstable kind of mood traveling in China was so uh, common for people to see foreigners. So especially a foreigner looking like this uh, was not quite common. So I, I did, uh, those days we were shooting with film. My major concern was could I be cr able to cross back to Macau with all my films? Because that was what I was actually afraid of. So I had to kind of hide the film and so on. Um, so the first uh, stop was Guangzhou. Uh, then I took um, a boat to Hainan and then uh, to Guilin, and then back again to Guangzhou, and then uh, all the way to Beijing. So this was a trip about 30 days. Um, so you'll see here images from different uh, cities. Um, what I tried to collect here from the whole trip, of course there's many other images, but what I realized that was kind of unique from this trip was not, normally as a photographer you try to capture moments and you try to you know, uh, uh, look into other people's life in a way of capturing kind of a, a sneak peek of something. But in fact, what I realized was for, for people in China, I was more of a surprise than they would be for me. So they were very curious about me. What is this white guy doing here around, walking around with a camera and taking pictures? So he actually allowed me to, to have some kind of an interaction with them, a little bit of a candid relationship um, from the young girl businessman and some other some other situation so there was always moments when um, so 
So uh, most of the images we'll try, except this one here, actually, Nuno, Nuno is not here, Tristan is not here. Uh, Nuno actually asked me, but Nuno, this one is not looking at you. So I actually was curious because this gentleman, uh, obviously these were different days in China, so the economy in China wasn't as developed as it is today. Um, so I did find, and had, I have other shots of uh, people actually selling stuff on the street, from vegetables to this case where he's selling some ceramics. <clears throat> the thing about this image, though he's not looking at me, this is just like a second right after he looked at me. So he basically kind of was, he looked at me, why are you taking the picture? And then he looked at these images and it was like, it was like meditating, why is this foreigner actually interfering on my life and observing? So there was a, 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 it was not just so much as me capturing the moment, but they actually questioning my presence. What are you doing? Let's not forget again, it was 89, kind of man. So uh, there was other situations where I couldn't photograph. Uh, for instance, in the boat, there was this teacher, this English teacher. I was traveling with a Swiss man, a Swiss person. And he was very tall, really very tall, and originally tall. And there was this uh, gentleman in the boat that kept looking at us and eventually approached us. He wanted to talk with us, so uh, I, I didn't photograph, I put the camera down. And he came to talk with us in English a little bit and so on for a few minutes, and then he said, okay, okay, you gotta go now. I said, well, why, you, why, you, why, you, why don't you stay? He said, no, 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 I can't talk with you too much, because if a person like me is seen talking to a foreigner, it's actually kind of, you know, uh, conflictuous for, for his uh, social surroundings. So there was a, a little bit of a tension. So capturing these smiles of these people was something that, uh, you see, most of the images is people are like, there's this questioning moment where they look back at the camera. So it's not so much as the interest of the, the camera point of view, but more of the people that is being photographed towards me. Um, this, this, uh, this one here is, this lady here uh, is, I tried to buy a ticket for the boat from uh, Guangzhou to Hainan, and the first answer was no, just to, no. What are you here? You're not supposed to be here. So they're not selling book tickets to you. So I had to, to get some help from some people to buy the book. But after I bought the ticket, finally got the ticket after a while of questioning, when I left, she closed the curtain. She literally hide away from me, like, oh. And then she sneaked through the window, and I, 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 that's why it's a little bit blurry, and I kind of catch the moment. Uh, this one on the, on the right side is in the, I believe it's the Summer Palace in Beijing. And there's this uh, square, I think it's the the wall of secrets or something to that effect, where basically the, j the architecture of the wall, if you speak to the wall, the sound is off. So you can listen to your message. Okay. So this gentleman was there. And I have another shot with him doing the action, but he was like, <laughs> always there was the little bit the attitude. Yes, yeah. so it was like. Um, this one was, um, this one actually was a little bit scary because these guys were doing the, uh, the flag, the, the burning of the flag, raising of the flag. Uh, Tiananmen Square, literally. It's the, a little bit uh, the most sensitive. I have another shot where they didn't find so interesting uh, a guy taking picture and he's walking towards to me, like literally putting his hands, to get out of here, I can't be here. But I managed to get this one and I have another one where he's turned to the flag and there. But what I found it was interesting, he didn't flinch. He looked straight in my eye, like super powerful. Very fearful, fierce look. Uh, these two on the side, these are, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Yangshuo. So Yangshuo today is a very touristic city. I've been there a couple of years ago. It's completely different. Full of mini hotels and restaurants for foreigners. It was not like that. It was literally a village. And then, so these, uh, on the top, there was a series of images that I collected where there was some, um, it's like social institutions, party, communist party social institutions that were uh, I think providing some help, some social care or something like that. And this was a kind of a market surrounded by those kind of institutions. Um, I'll be honest, I, I, it was a very quick pass through. I didn't want to, I wasn't, 
uh, they were curious, but I wasn't welcome, basically. And so they were just like, kind of look at me for a few seconds. But if I stayed there longer, they probably would have like, brushed me off or kicked me out. Or something like that. I wasn't, I, I didn't belong there totally. The one on the, on the bottom, I think they, either they just finished the mill, either this looks more like um, a residential patio kind of thing. Puts on those kind of things. So I just passed through, a, a, it was like a little village, and I was going through their alleys. And either they just finished or they were waiting. I think they were waiting for some meat, because they were literally cooking the meat on the, on the fire. Um, again, the, the one, the gentleman on the, on the middle, he was very curious. He was like actually engaging with me. So basically, so these are some images that, uh, that I capture. They're very old. I think most most people know know me for for a few years. I've been doing this, but I think this uh, this period was, uh, I would say, probably technically not the best imageries. But I think the innocence of uh, and curiosity kind of photography. Thank you, Jean Paul, for bringing it. It's a great. It's a great testimony of the recent past that we all have uh, witnessed uh, very recently, and uh, and we are part of it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Nuna. So what's next? Um, um, in fact, we have um, uh, we would have Cassia shoot with us, but instead she isn't because she's away to in a trip and and uh, therefore we have a text that she sent for us to maybe read. She tried to uh, she tried to send a video with her talking, but in fact uh, only the text came through. So I have I didn't want it to read again. I wanted to have someone else to read, uh, if possible. Um, I know Dudu. Uh, her husband is here with us. Would you like to read? No. I can I can see my friend Juliet here, and uh, I would like to ask you to read. That's great that you joined. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just checking that it's not in Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Cassia is a very good friend, so I'm honored to be able to speak and read this on her behalf because she's traveling in India. Um, I think I know where I prefer to be tonight as much as I like to celebrate her work and everybody else's. But anyway, um, first and foremost, this is the message. First and foremost, I would like to extend my gratitude to the Half Tone Association and all our sponsors for making this project a reality. I also want to thank each of you for being here today and celebrate to celebrate this moment with us. <clears throat> I'm truly honored to be featured in this edition and thrilled to be part of a community that shares a profound passion for photography, both as an art and as a profession. Today, I'm excited to introduce Beyond the Visible, Portraits, Whispers of the Souls. This project is a heartfelt reflection of my journey where my passion for capturing the essence of individuals through their eyes began as a casting producer in Brazil. This collection consists of carefully curated portraits, all with travel photography, along with travel photographs, with work projects and cherished moments with my children. Although I am not in Macau tonight to share the story behind each image, I encourage you to take a moment to look deeply at each photo. I invite you to discover the layers beneath the surface and what lies beyond the visible. Please enjoy the event. I hope you take home a copy to appreciate the reflect upon. Thank you, Cassia.
So it's great. But um, so now, now we have, uh, in fact, the last project which I mentioned in the beginning, which is the tribute to Ozue. So can you can you go through Ozue Heiko? So we um, this is was uh, a, a the master of the masters in photography in Japanese. A Japanese master that we uh, that we have uh, unfortunately um, passed away a couple months ago, and he has such a such a beautiful and meaningful work. For example, he actually was the one uh, to to photograph. Can you show the next one? Can you show the next one? Photograph the uh, Yukimishima's uh, suicidal uh, ritual, which, were, which happened in 1970, and it was Yukimishima that a actually asked Ozue to, you know, perform the photography and and follow him, accompany him in the in the all ritual. Um, so. There is an article from João Miguel Barros in this magazine that um, you can uh, read, and some of the pictures portrayed here are actually f um, uh, owned by João Miguel Barros, and he provided us um, the digital copy for us to uh, reproduce here. So we are very glad that we have this uh, in in our magazine this time. Um, so within this, uh, I think I have gone through the magazine. Uh, I want to thank only one more thing. I want to thank Joana, Joana Freitas, uh, for the for this photograph, because this is how we usually start the magazine. We have someone that um, sends us a photograph with a, a quote from whoever meaningful they wanted to associate the word with our image. Uh, usually we uh, put together uh, an awarded photograph of one of our members in, a, in this spread, a double page. Uh, and in this, uh, in this case, it's uh, Joanna Freitas' uh, single photo uh, awarded in the category of Camões, Myth and Reality, by Macau Closer magazine. It was a photo competition earlier this year. And um, and so this is to maybe give another poetic moment to uh, to the to the magazine and to the to this um, presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, I would just like to to uh, tell something that uh, João mentioned that uh, we do not have theoretical articles. We do not have a, a lot of theory in the magazine, focusing mostly on image. But that is not exactly true, and uh, that is something that I I find it remarkable since the, uh, issue number one up until uh, until this issue number ten with the. Uh, with an ast astonishing consistency, are the, the editorials that have been uh, kept very carefully and very wisely uh, written by João and also by other other members. But uh, I would like is, is a, the, those ed editorials are done together. But uh, it is somehow uh, ast uh, astonishing and and uh, to read them because they manage to give sense to the group that is being published in each magazine. So the, there is an understanding of the different proposals that necessarily do not liaise with each other. But there is also an understanding by the editorial team that is not just uh, packing things together and, and uh, releasing them. It's also very important to give sense to what is being published, given their understanding and their reading of what is uh, being done. And um, it's it's something that sometimes we are focused and we need to read it fast and to see the images, and we go through that pages without realizing 
how important that page is for the magazine, for the consistency of the editorial project, and for the consistency of the work that Halftone is trying to do by publishing these numbers. So, these numbers. So, uh, in, in, the, in the person of João, I would like, in, on behalf of the uh, Halftone uh, board, to give him a deep congratulations on his effort and his, and his uh, pursuit of excellency in the way the, the, the different projects have been presented and in the way the, the, he, uh, the, t the team explains what is the purpose of photography and what is the meaning and how to achieve a better re uh, result, a better outcome uh, to, uh, for, for the, the goal that is much more than uh, six things together. It's not six things together, it's much more what is achieved here. Congratulations, João. Thank you. But, uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Francisco, but it's not only me, it's the whole editorial team. So right now we are six, uh, I can name all of them. Uh, some are here sitting with me, with us. Uh, let me see, uh, Tristan is over there. That guy is the designer, the graphic designer. <clears throat> we have Alan Young, which is not here. I don't see him. Uh, we have um, we have uh, Andre, which I saw him here before. Uh, we have Stefan Stefan Nunes over there. Sarah. We have Sarah that is that I, that is not here, and we 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 will have um, uh, new members coming on board for for this editorial team. So. Thank you. And uh, now I think we should give uh, the opportunity to anyone to maybe there was there were some uh, interesting presentations that that, that maybe uh, food for thought. And I think I would I, I think it would be useful to have the, someone to ask questions even to the authors that are here present. Anyone? No problem. It's all right. Um, so, shall we make a one or two questions, or 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 informally outside? I don't, I don't know. What do you want to do? Anybody? So we need we need to pick out the first first question. So, well, you've been involved in. The in this project for so for this couple of weeks so weeks. Any <laughs> <laughs> so anything you'd like to raise so basically one uh, magazine like this takes about four to five months to to to, to produce to right um, <clears throat> uh, and 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 before that you have we, we have to try to seize people right yes yes right so um Maybe I would have a little question uh, for uh, Jane. Jane, um, in your in your pursuit of understanding the beauty of uh, people, and um, I think it come, came it came clear to us that uh, your project was outstanding in 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 the sense that your pursuit of beauty um, follows the beauty of images and and there is a, almost an intimacy with uh, with the perform with the with the people with the people that you uh, photograph right um just a very simple question and what's what's the um uh, relation that you uh, put in the stage. So there is a stage where you um, direct the actions uh, of of, uh, of these uh, people. How is, uh, is it a natural, something that you think at the moment? Is it something that is planned ahead? How is it the process? Do you understand? Um. It depends. <laughs> Very well. 
And most of the time, I will ask them to um, try to um, um, try to what? Im imagine uh, she is staying at her own house with herself. Um, I will ask, um, would you like to sit? Or lie down, um, and sometimes talk about their recent lives. They tell tell me stories, or sometimes I will I will, I will observe them. Sometimes, for example, he she has scars here. I would ask her to talk me tell tell me stories about her scars. Um, why they talk, they feel relaxed. And, um, and do, do you capture the scars? Yes. Right. Yes. So, so some, some pictures uh, showed, I will, um, not, not, um, <laughs> mm. I think I, we, we got, we, you don't hide. Yeah. So it's not to show case that, but, Yes. On the overall, it's there. Uh -huh. mm. Usually, they have when they are um, when they are comfortable, and they actually when someone come to me, they sure they they have something to say, just they don't use to. Uh, speak uh, or say with words. Um, so I try to create a, a space that they feel comfortable, and they, when they understand, um, I don't judge them in certain standards. Usually, they will let themselves out. Yeah. So they they just enjoy their own moment and stage. Totally understood. Thank you so much, Jen, again. <laughs> All right, thank you. Session closed. Yeah? Yeah. Any more questions? Any more stories? No? So uh, really nice to have you here. And uh, uh, good to share popcorn. <laughs>